and I would like to introduce my company. My company is Topadron, and we produce uh, different kind of equipment for drone, uh, for survey and mapping. A few days before, I just come back from Martinique. It's a small island with a very uh, high terrain, with a rugged terrain, and with uh, vegetation. And uh, in Martinique, we provide the uh, training for survey and mapping. And I would like to show the example how we can use uh, UGCS together with our LiDAR equipment to get a good accuracy and how easy it is to prepare a mission right now in UGCS Expert, which supports different kinds of LiDARs and it has a lot of settings. So in the beginning, we made, a, uh, we made a, uh, during our training for our clients in Martinique for a Matopa company, we, we bring our LiDAR equipment and we install LiDAR equipment, uh, uh, we install LiDAR on their Matrix 200 drone. It's an uh, old one, it's the uh, first one version of Matrix 200, but it's, it is supported by the UGCS. And of course we prepare, and first of all, which we show to our clients, we show mission planning. And as you can see, we have mountain terrain and uh, we need to prepare mission over the, uh, Riverside and uh, the terrain is uh, is very changeable. So we have a, a high slope of terrain, and there is only one possibility to prepare a lighter mission. Uh, it's uh, is to make a terrain following plot, and it is one of the most uh, important features of UGCS that you can make a terrain following mode even with using of uh, uh, easy to upload. Uh, open to use data, or you can upload your own terrain model if you, uh, if you prepare it before. Next step, as soon as we walk in the, mount, uh, in the mountain area and uh, uh, network connection was uh, very bad, so we upload all, all data set uh, in our notebook and we prepare a mission without any internet connection. It's a, a great benefit and great advantage of UGCS as well. And of course, it's very easy to prepare a mission with uh, a new one, UGCS slider mission planning tool. So first of all, we prepare infinity sign in the sky. It, it is necessary to calibrate IMU inside of the LiDAR system. And it can be easy, easily made with just one button. We were waiting for it uh, for, uh, for more than one year if uh, as soon as it will be released. And finally, we have very good option how to prepare calibration part of the mission. And after that, we just use a LiDAR mission tool, LiDAR area tool to prepare a mission. And it's very important that UGCS provides us a very smooth uh, trajectory of the flight. So we use uh, adaptive banking type of trajectory. And as you can see, uh, our trajectory uh, on the turning part of trajectory, it's very smooth flying. It's very important for the LiDAR. And as soon as uh, inside of our LiDAR system, we use very high precision IMU from Honeywell, we don't need to make additional calibration during the flight like it's uh, very, uh, like it is uh, necessary, like it, uh, it is obligatory to, to prepare such part of calibration from another one manufacturer of, of LiDARs. Uh, when uh, after 100 seconds they are uh, required to make calibration, we need just only one calibration before the flight. And as a result, you will get very accurate trajectory and uh, you can generate point cloud in very fast way. After that, as soon as we uh, made the survey, and as you can see on the screenshot, uh, our survey of this area just take us uh, approximately 11 minutes and we use the terrain following mode and we uh, finally, we got the data set and after that, we process all data sets uh, together with our client in the field. And uh, before leaving the, uh, the area of survey, we will already receive the results, already uh, evaluate the result. And it's very easy to do. In general, I would like to show, if I have some, uh, some minutes, I would like to show how easy it is to uh, process LiDAR data. As soon as we prepare LiDAR mission, next step, we need to upload uh, LiDAR data to our software. We need to choose the data set from the drone. We need to choose uh, a set of the antenna and we need to, to choose a base station file for the base station which was installed in the field. Um, uh, as soon as we add the base station file, software will show us the position of our base station as well on, on, on the area. And after that, uh, we just uh, need to run data processing. Data processing is very simple and uh, totally automatic. We just click start and within a few minutes, uh, we will get precise trajectory of our flight. And after that, we will generate point cloud. The main advantage of our technology uh, that it is possible to evaluate accuracy of your data set on, this, on the stage of 
GNSS data post-processing, and after that, you can generate point cloud on a trustful data set, uh, on, a, on a, the basis of trustful trajectory. And uh, point cloud generation is very fast, and it will take you a few minutes more to generate point cloud after the flight. And after that, you can evaluate the accuracy, you can evaluate data set, and you will get very accurate results. Uh, LiDAR data is uh, very accurate and stable. Right now, uh, we prepare our data set. Uh, we, uh, pre we prepare our trajectory. And as you can see, uh, our trajectory is shown on the map and we can uh, evaluate the quality. We can uh, evaluate if we have a fixed solution or we have uh, not load solution or there is no any solution and we can see uh, on the screen where we fly. And after that, as soon as we evaluate the, uh, and understand the quality of our trajectory, next step, we will generate point cloud. In order to generate point cloud, we will select uh, raw uh, li uh, LiDAR data, after that, uh, we will select uh, trajectory file, which was just created by us. After that, we, we can choose just only a part of our trajectory to generate point cloud to save your time or to avoid wasting of uh, memory of your computer. Uh, for example, we will avoid uh, some part of trajectory on a, part, uh, on a calibration part of trajectory or on the turning points of trajectory. Uh, after that, we are able to start the point cloud generation. And of course, what was the main advantage for our client? We provided for our client, not only uh, software, we provided support for uh, a local coordinate system of Martinique, as well as the Martinique Joy. And it is in included to the software. As a result, you will generate point cloud in already predefined project uh, coordinate system, which is uh, very important for our client. As soon as we uh, select the Martinique uh, coordinate system, we select Joy file from Martinique, we will start point cloud generation. And it will take a, a few minutes more, just uh, uh, I think it will take one or two minutes to generate point cloud from the LiDAR in, re in real time. And this one, it's a great advantage. It's an outstanding advantage of, our, of a LiDAR survey. It's, it works uh, 10 times faster and, and more um, consistent in comparison with the photogrammetry. If uh, you work with photogrammetry, uh, you depend on, uh, the quality of the data and accuracy of the data depends on uh, um, um, depends on a lot of uh, uh, characteristics of the image, such as uh, light conditions, such as noise conditions. Uh, if you have a forest, if you have a strong wind in the forest, and sometimes it's very difficult to uh, to make a block alignment for, in a photogrammetry. But for lidar, it doesn't matter. You can fly even at night. Uh, you can fly in a forest area. And the uh, ground penetration in, sport, uh, in forest uh, area, it's amazing. Within uh, just, uh, you need just to generate point cloud. And after that, after a few minutes, you will get ex exact, very accurate terrain level in the, of the point cloud. Um, so right now we just uh, finished uh, point cloud generation. And, and as, uh, as I already said, it takes uh, le less than uh, one or two minutes. And after that, we can open this point cloud in any kind of software to make point cloud classification and to, to generate control lines and create maps. Of course, in our software, we have uh, special tools to, uh, to view point cloud in real time after, uh, after generating. But I would suggest to use another one, software LiDAR 360, uh, to open a point cloud and uh, to make uh, uh, terrain extraction, to classify terrain, to remove some noise, and uh, to evaluate the quality and to generate control lines. And within a few minutes more, I will generate con control lines for this area on the basis of uh, point cloud classification. So I will open uh, our point cloud, which was just uh, generated. Um, I will open the point cloud, and within few minutes, within few minutes, I will make uh, uh, I will make uh, point cloud classification and terrain extraction and generation of contour lines. Uh, right now, I would like to show you a point cloud which was just uh, generated by me, and it was made in a, in a, in the field. And before leaving the field, we can evaluate our quality of the point cloud. This one is a point cloud. And here we capture some power lines, which was under the point. Uh, um, um, here you see it, it crosses the, the area, uh, power lines. It's a very thin power lines, which uh, and uh, power poles was not captured uh, because they are, uh, they are located outside of uh, 
the area. But as, as we can see, all uh, we capture all power poles. Uh, we um, uh, we capture uh, uh, terrain level, uh, vegetation, buildings, uh, roads, everything we need, and we can create a cross section. And we have amazing penetration of uh, uh, forest, uh, and uh, we can easily extract terrain even in very dense uh, forest area. But this one, it's a uh, uh, cross section, and we can see that we penetrated uh, for a forest in a very good uh, level. And after that, we need just a few, uh, few more steps to classify terrain. Uh, just click button, uh, classify ground, and after that, uh, uh, to generate control lines. So it will take uh, maybe one to, or two minutes more. But what I would like to say at the end of my presentation, I would like to say that LiDAR, it's like a new technology which provides you uh, outstanding efficiency. So if we, uh, if we make a survey over this area of such uh, very hard to reach terrain area with the forest, and uh, with using of common techniques like total station on, or Genesis receivers in RTK mode, we will spend, we will spend several uh, weeks to make a survey for this area. And the price of such surveys, it costs approximately 1,000 uh, euro dollars per uh, 1,000 square meters. So we, will, we cover uh, uh, just uh, 40, uh, 400,000 square meters right now. So we cover it uh, 40 hectares. So the price of such survey in the forest terrain area will, will cost approximately $40,000. It is more than the price of the LiDAR. And you can cover this area and you can get results of this area in the same day. It's amazing when your client will get uh, uh, all data sets uh, right now. Only uh, it's uh, li like real time monitoring of the area. So what I would like to say that it's a new technology and LiDAR, I think it's a uh, future.